Hi, I'm Danny DeLillo with New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. We're in the beautiful West Hollywood at the Cambridge Los Angeles showroom, and I'm here with Goran Stankovic with his movie, Wayne Rye. Let's take a look at a clip. Надеюсь, что война скоро закончится. Погода отличная, тепло и солнечно. Goran, it's great to have you here with us today. Um, tell us about Wayne Rai. So, uh, Wayne Rai takes place in uh, Soviet Russia during the World War II. And um, the idea of the film that it kind of takes place while uh, the biggest museum in the world, uh, the Hermitage Museum, which was in Leningrad and now in St. Petersburg, is being evacuated. And all the artworks are being sent inland uh, to protect them from the Germans. Uh, and my film follows uh, one of the crates, because they were packing all these art exhibits in, into, the, into the crates and sending them off in, uh, with trucks and trains inland to hide them. And uh, the film actually follows one of the crates uh, that goes um, on a truck and arrives at a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere where a family, a farmer and his wife, uh, are now supposed to protect this. Uh, they, on the other hand, are waiting for their son to come back, their son who's at war. And they first think that uh, that uh, coffin uh, or crate is, is actually their son. And soon they, they find out that they have uh, been charged to protect these, these works of art, which now they have to find meaning in, since they're you know, waiting for their son and he's not, he's not returning. Where was your inspiration behind the film? Uh, the inspiration came from uh, one of the writers. Uh, we had two writers on this project, uh, Liska Ostovich and Justin Partridge. Uh, it was a, a project, uh, a thesis film at AFI, so we all teamed together. And uh, Liska read this book that was called Madonnas of Leningrad by Deborah Dean. And the book actually deals with uh, this woman who was giving tours in the Hermitage. She was in the uh, evacuation committee mm -hmm. uh, protecting these pieces of art and uh, packing them. And then after that, she kept going into the Hermitage and giving tours to these soldiers uh, with empty frames, talking about the, the paintings that were there. We found that amazing, but then we were also interested, where did these paintings go? Where, where did they end up? So then we started um, making our own story, basically, from there. What if uh, one of these crates ended up somewhere where it wasn't expected to? Uh, somewhere where it wasn't someone that uh, is an art lover that will appreciate this, but someone that uh, this will be new to and will have to find something in it. And that's how we came upon uh, our main characters, uh, the two farmers. Um, and, um, and then once we, uh, once we got there, we wanted to see who are these people. And then we kind of said, what do they have at stake? And they have their son, which, which they have given uh, to the state. Uh, and then it starts there, basically. That, that's, that's the beginning um, kind of plot mm -hmm. uh, of the movie. And then we watch this, this family through uh, the four seasons and yeah. how they struggle. Yeah, speaking of four seasons, Wayne Rye is such a beautiful cine, you know, cinematic experience. Where did you shoot it? Was it in Russia? No, no right, right. So th that, that's so nice that you say that because that, that, was, that was really important for us and it was such a pleasure uh, to screen last night to, to, you know, on, on a big screen. It's, just, it's always nice to see it uh, because th I think that's how it's meant to be mm -hmm. watched. Um, we didn't uh, s shoot it in Russia. We shot it in California. See, uh, look at that. R amazing. That's, that's a sign of a great director. <laughs> we, I mean, it was a lot of, lot of uh, uh, scouting, I'll tell you that. It was like it, we, we knew what we were looking for six months ahead, and we went all around California. Because uh, the AFI rules, um, they, they have to, we have to shoot the movie in California. Mm -hmm. And, and it, actually in, in the 30-mile zone, which was impossible to do in L.A. So we had to go outside the zone for, for that. Uh, for the places where we built the house. Mm -hmm. Of course, we couldn't find a Russian house, uh, an Isba house that was, that was you know, here in, in California. So we had to build that house mm -hmm. on a vista that looked like California. And that was in uh, Idlewild, wow. uh, a couple of hours from here. Yeah. Now, how did you find such wonderful like, cast that there were such a brilliant performances? Thank you. Uh, the, the ca yeah, the cast obviously was, I mean, when you do a period piece, uh, especially of, of something that is n 
uh, foreign to you. I'm Serbian, but I, um, uh, I'm very familiar with the Russian culture because Serbia and Russia uh, have a lot in common since years back. Uh, and um, we also learn Russian in, in elementary school. It's kind of mandatory and so on. So uh, it's very familiar to me, but it's not, it's not my, my piece of land. It's not my history. So um, what was very important is to be authentic when you, when you make it. Th that's the only way it's going to really work. Um, and one of the main things was finding these faces that fit um, these actors. And uh, L.A. is you know, familiar for, um, especially when, when Russians are concerned, you know, there's a, there's a stereotype here about Russians playing the bad guys. And, and that's, that's ma mainly uh, who would walk on the door when I would uh, send a casting call. You know, these mm -hmm. rough guys, <laughs> they were, you know, the mafia guys. Yeah. And, uh, and it was so hard to find this, you know, farmer who had, you know, hands that would, you know, I would believe that he works, you know, there mm -hmm. and, and that that's his life. And yeah. so um, I was actually uh, by, by a mentor of mine, a producer, I was, um, I was recommended, I was two weeks out shooting mm -hmm. the movie and AFI was telling me that um, if we don't find it, we have to consider shooting the film in English with the actors doing a Russian accent, which was the, like if you aim for authenticity, that would be a, a complete disaster, of the opposite. So uh, I was freaking out obviously and then um, a mentor of mine said, okay, there's, there's, there's a guy that I worked with, he's a really, really uh, great actor his name is Ravil Lysyanov. Uh He's done a lot, so I don't know if he'll do it. He's an, kind of an A-list actor. And, uh, but send the script, call him, say I recommend it, and see what happens. So I call the guy immediately, send the script, said this, this is really important to me, please read it. Uh, and he did, and he, he called me right back. Wow. The same day. Wow. He's like, listen, I, 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 I want to do it, let's meet up. And we met up, and I was just, yeah, that, that's it. You, you're, we shook hands. I mean, I didn't even think about the language at all. I was just so captured by the experience of watching your movie. Um, you know, you've got a great goat actor as well, by the way. Really good goat actor in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> right. um, so you're I mean, a well-traveled director. I mean, you say you're from Serbia. You said you also spent some time in London and now you're in California. Um, that's amazing. So what, what brought you to Los Angeles? Well, yeah, so I, uh, I started uh, my, my film education in Serbia. Uh, I went to an University of Arts in Belgrade, and uh, that was a four-year undergraduate uh, film and TV directing program where we did uh, documentary film. We also did all other, uh, you know, we did live coverage with multiple cameras and stuff like that. And, uh, and after that, I graduated and I started working in Serbia uh, and making my own projects, working um, on other people's projects, but I just felt like I was missing something, you know, on, on my uh, road to, to just being developed as a director, so um, I, I wanted to do a master's course. And I, um, I came to LA um, and I visited a couple of schools and I thought when I went to AFI that that was, that was the place that, that I should apply uh, because it was a, a program that from day one uh, gets you in the, in the discipline. Uh, you're doing directing from day one, you're not doing a bit of everything before you decide because I already had decided four years before that I was already trained to be a director. So. Mm -hmm. They, they offered that program and I thought that's, that, that seems like the right place. Uh, so well, the I, AFI I, is a very prestigious school, isn't absolutely, it? Well? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I was, I was obviously hoping to get in. So Gorm's very, very good. Very good director to get into that school. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> so yeah, th that's, that's how I came basically. It was three years ago, came to the master's program, uh, graduated a year ago, and I'm, I'm here now.